All right. So um, I want to I want to tell you something funny. When I was younger, and much better looking than I am now, and didn't realize it that I was not bad looking. I was actually pretty adorable. I wouldn't leave my house before I'd showered. I wouldn't let anybody see me before I'd showered and dressed. I felt I had to be somewhat perfect. The best version of perfect I could come up with. Um, before I'd let anybody see me, and now I go on camera, after not showering for two days, like right now, uh, and kind of in the same clothes I wore most of the day yesterday, and probably the day before. But I got going yesterday and I didn't want to waste time on taking a shower. But it's funny, I just, I don't care as much as I used to. I went to the market, I had to go to the supermarket yesterday and my hair was like this and my clothes were stained with paint and I was kind of looking like one of my homeless friends. But I wear the same mask every time so people recognize me and they don't send security after me, which does happen. I was talking to somebody at Michael's up the street uh, earlier this week, one of the sales girls there, and uh, she recognized me because of the mask and also my whacked out hair. But we were talking about the mask and how funny it is. She was telling me, because it's a mustache. It's just a white black mask with a mustache on it. And she, she said, if I don't recognize your hair, I recognize the mustache. And I said, you know, I told her why I do it. And she gave me a fist bump because she's um, an African-American. She's a black American. And she's used to being followed around by in stores. And I said, well, so am I. I'm used to being asked, you know, having people stand right on top of me. Salespeople stand right on top of me. And there's one store when I go downtown where I buy incense and periodically buy a necklace. Um, a new little necklace piece. They're, they don't cost very much and it just makes me feel a little bit better. Like an amulet. I'm buying an amulet to empower myself. But they, every single time I go in, and I've been in, I don't know, six, ten times, I'll have a salesperson standing literally right on top of me. Hi, what'd you come in for? Can I help you with something? So I walk around with my hand I walk around with my hands up or behind my back so they can see. And I'll say, I'm not homeless, I just dress weird and my hair is odd sometimes. I have to say it every single time. And they still stand on top of me. But anyway, regardless. Oh, I like that. Um, regardless, I always I was always embarrassed by my looks, and so I wouldn't leave the house till I'd showered. And now, now I won't shower for days, and I go on YouTube and say, "This is my hair. This is the way it is." Too bad. As you can see, I'm prepping. I'm doing more work on these um, cardboard pieces, like in the last video. But when I started these, I had them up against the wall and I'm just finding better patterns with the cardboard laid down. I'm seeing the creases in the cardboard. Oh, when my eyes, you know, oh, oh, my back and following them. These are two pieces that I prepped before with white, black, and then gray gesso. And as you can see, I'm kind of going over the gray a little bit with the black. And I'm glad I did. I picked a larger brush. I just needed a grander feel. So I'll go back into these two that I just sewed this morning. Yeah, you can see it. Go over it with gray like I did these, only with a large brush, and then go over them again with a black brush. Again, I don't have a plan for them yet. 
I want to do faces. I think I want to do very large faces like I used to years ago. Do large faces with uh, large hands. My, oh God. Oh. My first inclination is to go abstract, but I really think that's just too easy. Well, this is all broken right in here. It's wonderful. So we'll see what my head decides. But I'm getting excited, and the more gesso I put on, the firmer uh, the the firmer the uh, gesso becomes. Wait a sec, I'll be right back. Oh. This one's kind of dry. I'm gonna pick up the other one. Yeah, so now I'm walking around with my hair everywhere, unshowered, saggy old face, old clothes. And it's funny, I'm, I'm more comfortable now than I used to be. And I think it's funny when I go into a store and people follow me or I get this, you know, up and down look, like, what are you doing in here? I actually, the store I went to yesterday, I went into a few couple of weeks ago. I was looking at soap. It's one of my I love I love a nice soap. And I'm standing there staring at soaps, trying to decide because I can't spend a lot of money on soap. I love good soap, but I'm you know I'm not going to spend a tremendous amount of money on it. And this woman walks up to me, the salesperson. She's watching me and following me around this store that I go into really a lot. It's not gray enough. It's mixing with the black and not becoming gray enough. Let's see what we can do. Um, I'm going to add some white, white gesso and try and get it a little bit lighter so I get a nice contrast. But it's funny because I'm standing there and I'm, I'm looking at soap. I'm in the soap aisle and I am looking at soap. I have my hands behind my back with a few items, with a basket. My hands are behind my back because she's been following me and staring at me, just standing and staring. Oh, not white enough, or not light gray enough, it's black. Um, and uh, she finally, she starts talking to another salesperson who's like, no, 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 she's in here all the time. And then finally, she, I hadn't seen her before, so she was probably new to the job and trying to impress. But she finally walked up to me and she said, uh, can I help you? And I said, no, I'm okay. And she said, well, what did you come in here for? And I, and I looked at her, I looked at her and I looked at the soap and pointed and I said, Soap. And she, she went, oh, oh, and walked away. But she stood at the end of the aisle watching me anyway. People are so funny. It's pretty insulting. I actually ended up leaving there without the soap. And I won't go back in that department when she's there. So if you've never been followed by a salesperson, I can tell you it's not fun. It's slightly unnerving because you've got to think about every movement that you make, where your hands are, how you stand. I literally, oh, that's not right either. All right, I should probably wait for this to dry a little bit longer before I tackle it again, because it's all turning gray, I mean a dark gray. Um, but if you've never been followed by a salesperson, I can tell you it's uncomfortable, it's distracting, um, it's embarrassing. It's really embarrassing. Ooh, let me grab my coffee. Not that I, you know, I'm easily embarrassed at all. But this woman staring at me had other people staring at me, other customers giving me looks, which I normally find pretty entertaining. I really do. 
and sometimes I'll play up the crazy just a little bit so I am further entertained. But there are times that it hits you the wrong way. Oh, man, actually in the light, it doesn't look that bad. Maybe I'll try a smaller brush. And I can't imagine what it would be like to be black. And under those circumstances, because I have had uh, security called on me a couple of times, several times, actually, many, well, let's put it this way, many times, because they haven't looked right or someone suspecting me of something that isn't going on. I know what it's like as a white person. I can't imagine what it is as a black person, because what if I had left and, and this girl had decided to call the police because she got it in her head that I was stealing something. Or one of the other myriad of stores where this happens. It happens at Walgreens. It happens in all kinds of places. Or like that place where I go to get um, incense. And they apparently never remember me. That's, uh, that place is on Main Street, right by the uh, police station, right? Just around the corner from the police station. So that's why I hold up my hands, or, or put them behind my back. Or hold them in front of me, like this. And I'm not joking. I'll walk around with my hands open like this. And I've walked up to the counter and I've gotten weird looks. And I'll say to them, if you want me to empty my pockets, I can. I've actually had to say to salesperson, people over and over again, I'm not homeless, like I said a minute ago, I'm not homeless, I'm not stealing anything. Now that happens to me once in a while, it doesn't happen all the time. But if I go to, let's say I go to three stores, I can be guaranteed that at least one of them I'm gonna have somebody following me. If not two of them, I'm gonna have someone following me. I had a salesperson the other day at my grocery store up the street watching me because I was talking with an African-American woman with the most beautiful child, beautiful little four-year-old. He was in the cart. And I said to her, where did you get that? Because I want one. And she had all these groceries. She didn't know what I was asking her. And uh, finally, you know, I said, I pointed to the little boy. I said, are they by the pound? And she started to laugh, and then we stood there and talked for a while. But I, I had another, I had a grocery store manager keeping an eye on me. And I'm in there all the time. We talked for quite a while. It was nice. She was going through a hard time. So I'm going to tackle this again with a larger brush. Now, something you don't know is that I like to go, or something else you may not know, I like to go on YouTube, and yeah, that's a nice lighter gray. That's exciting to me. I used, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, when I first did these two pieces of cardboard, these first two pieces of cardboard, I had uh, really used a smaller brush than I shouldn't have, but it's okay because I can doctor it now with this larger brush. Much, much, much better choice because it takes a small um, surface and makes it feel bigger. This big brush. 
as opposed to going small, tiny, tiny. I don't, ugh, that doesn't, that doesn't get me going. So I've been thinking about something else too, because another thing you may not know about me is I love going on YouTube or going on the web and looking things up. Because I keep thinking, maybe I'm, what am I missing here? What is it that I'm missing? I have, I have a lot of fans. I'm sorry to use that word, but I do. I have a lot of friends. Let's, let's put it that way. I have a lot of friends who like my work, who enjoy my work, and invest in my work. I go, oh. I apply to galleries. I, I apply to reps. I apply to magazines, I apply to competitions, but I keep thinking, I'm, what am I missing? Because sometimes, most of the time, I don't hear back, which is kind of weird. And so I keep thinking, what, it's kind of rude is what it is, but whatever. I keep thinking, what, am I missing something? Is there something I'm not doing? So I'll check and see, you know, I'll look at CVs and uh, resumes, you know, what, how, to, how to write, or an artist statement, how to write an artist statement, how to write a CV so that it gets people's attention, you know, and also, oh, I'm liking this so much more, oh, old back injury, several old back injuries, sorry. Um, anyway, what am I missing? Why am I not, why can I not get noticed by the quote-unquote right people? And so I, I'll watch videos, uh, how-to videos, you know, how to get noticed. How to, you know, how to, how to do this, how to do that. And every single time, it's the same information. Make stuff and post it. Apply to galleries. It's all these experts, they just tend to say the same things over and over again. And I'm telling you this because if you feel like you're lost, you're not alone, number one. If you feel like you're being lost in the crowd and maybe you're missing something, you're probably not. Because I'm on Instagram. Oh my God, my back. Oh, I'm on Instagram, uh, Pinterest, uh, YouTube, obviously. I have, I think, four Facebook pages. Um, I'm in a bunch of places. I submit uh, to all different kinds of contests and competitions. Not ones that are going to cost money because. Normally, those don't pay off really well anyway. Um, I've done them. But usually those, do, usually those don't pay off. Let me go prep this guy. Use gray in this one. Um, but it's always the same. It's usually just the same information. And it turns out I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, and it's just keeping our fingers crossed. And I wanted to discuss this a little bit. Here, I'm gonna stop, my back is killing me. I want, sorry for the hair, sorry for the bags under my eyes, unwashed. I'm one of the unwashed masses. Uh, but I wanted to talk about this, just let's see how we're doing. Oh yeah, crazy. Um, I wanted to talk about this a little bit because if you're post, if, because we're always looking for, or I'm always looking for that magic bullet. That magic bullet, what am I missing? And if you're doing what I'm doing, which is, you know, making videos, posting on Instagram, uh, Facebook, blah, 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 we're doing all the things right. If we're hashtagging and connecting and internet connecting, we're doing the things right. If you're updating your website, built a website, updating your website, we're doing all the things right. It's just, it just is what it is. So what I would like to suggest, again, is um, 
that we do what artists in the past have always done and artists do currently. Let's connect, let's share, let's help each other out. If we go back to the Impressionist period, this is like one of the biggest, um, this was one of the biggest movements in art history where the, um, where tradition was rejected and this new art form came about. I mean, it also came about with Rauschenbach and Picasso and all those guys, but hang on. Impressionist period was like a rip the band-aid off of, off of society and societal pace. And all these, all these people, all these men mainly, uh, but also people like uh, Mary Cassatt, uh, ripped the band-aid off and just said, we're done with this. We're gonna do what, our, what we wanna do. And they helped each other. They had their own salons. They promoted their own shows. They helped promote each other and build a little community that of course now is like, oh, well, we look back at them like they, they, were, um, they were the cornerstone of the art world, not when they started and certainly not some, most of them by the time their lives ended. They were outsiders. You know, a few of them went, you know, they had all the right connections, so they floated to the top and they were well known within their lifetimes and they could, um, they could support themselves and support other artists as well. But we're all stuck right now. So we're all, the outsiders, or most of us are the outsiders. We are the outsiders in the art world. So why don't we just help each other? Why don't we just help each other? Connect, uh, share, share. If you're doing work online, you have an Instagram page, Facebook page, share, not just me, but the artists around you. I do videos about other artists. I talk about other artists in these videos. Um, let's just help each other. Let's be our own little underground movement, okay? Instead of having to be uh, pushed on the outside or held sus suspect. Um, I was trying to tie it into the shoplifting thing, but I don't think it's going to work at all. No, it's not going to work at all. Let's hold up our hands and say we're here. And let's let's help each other out, okay? Um, I try and do that with as many pe people as I possibly can. Um, but I feel like I'm never doing enough. So let's build our own little core, our own little group, and work together. Not help, not just help keep, keep each other working, but help get, keep, get each other seen. Let's help get each other seen, okay? Anyway. <laughs> oh, ridiculousness. So I'm gonna finish up. I've got two canvases I have to do this to, add the gray to. And then uh, that's a commission piece that's gonna be started. So I've got two, two canvases I gotta prep and then we'll see what happens today, okay? Hopefully I won't sit in front of the computer and start watching YouTube or Netflix or Amazon again. Um, yeah, anyway, this is the last day of January, uh, uh, sorry, last day of 2020, yay. So let's vow to not only help ourselves, but to help each other, okay? Let's make that one of our big goals and help get each other seen in any way we can. All right, I'm going to stop now. Boo, 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 me, me, me. Right. Oh, and if you like this channel, please don't forget to subscribe. The button is somewhere on the screen or and also down below, I think it's somewhere. And if you like Studio 120 and you'd like to help support Studio 120, uh, all the links are down below. You can help through Patreon, Cash App, or PayPal. Nothing else works with me. But uh, so Patreon, Cash App, PayPal. And actually, some of that money goes to help buy supplies for other artists as well, just so you know. Uh, and, oh, the jingle. Ready? Patreon. Hashtag cats. Meow, meow, meow. It's New Year's Eve. Let's go into the new year mm, as strong as we possibly can. And, you know, that. All right. Ciao.
Ciao! And boing!